you're not used to being around people who are dying anymore. We've forgotten how to come alongside each other. Hello. Hey. We can just um, make vision boards of possibly of your fantasy funeral. We're short of caregivers and I would like to help the community, whatever community you're in, um, be more at ease with the reality that death is, is something that happens to all of us. I am an end of life doula and it's sometimes called a death doula. Some people have all kinds of different names for it. But what I do is I companion people who are dying and those that love them and are caring for them, whether that's family or friends. Here at Sparrow are about to have an event, which is talking about death over dessert and hanging out in just a really relaxed setting. Often people decorate boxes similar to this before they're cremated as a way just to memorialize the person too. I'm sort of facilitating conversation with whoever comes with questions about the dying process, about after death, funeral care, choices people have and how they may want their body taken care of, um, things like that. That's beautiful. Let's go and stand So pretty. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming. It's wonderful to see you. My name's Emma. I'm an end-of-life doula. This is Erica, who many of you know, the founder of Sparrow. And um, I've had a lot of people die in my life, and I always walked away from funerals feeling like they didn't represent the person that I loved. It always stuck with me and I had very clear ideas about what I would want a funeral home to be like, that it didn't really look like what a traditionally a funeral home looks like, that it didn't smell like one, that it be more of a vessel for people to fill with what's important to them. You're here not just for dead people, you're here for living people. <laughs> you're here for people to drop by and it's, it's like a space that's open to walk in to sit, to be in a place that deals with end of life, but in a way that feeds your living life right now. We're human beings, we have bodies, but we're not just our bodies, right? We, we are something else as well. And I think we are, you can call it a mixture of memory, experience, desire, longing. So it's like working with the whole person leading up to the death, but here, happening after and the, the storytelling that happens here is amazing. So we've got some activities here. We can just um, make vision boards of possibly of your fantasy funeral or what maybe you would love to see yourself um, where you'd like to be. articulate and kind of remove any like stigmas that I have or 
associate with death in a way. People in their 20s are necessarily comfortable talking about death. I think it's something where it's taboo to kind of like talk about and death is something that everybody experiences and will experience and I think because of that there should be some sort of camaraderie between us as people. Charlotte, would you like to pick a question? I would love to. Oh, okay. What are common things you've seen in a person's last moments before they die? That's a good question. Within the last 12 hours, someone coming out of sleep and seeing something that they recognize and, and, and reaching out or even partly sitting up and then going back. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's certainly something I've seen. We will either be the dying person or we will be around somebody that we love who is dying and to get more familiar with that. I think it's a form of wisdom to just get real about that. And also in keeping mortality on your mind a bit more, you, you live better.